In this video, I want to give you a formula that will help you to calculate the number of lone pairs on the center atom of a molecule. And so here's the formula. So the number of lone pairs on the center atom is equal to the total number of valence electrons in the molecule minus 8n divided by 2, where n is the number of atoms attached to the central atom. So the best way to learn how to use this formula is to put it into practice. So I'm going to go over a series of examples so you can see how to use it. So let's start with sulfur dioxide. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate the number of valence electrons. Sulfur has six valence electrons and oxygen has six but there's two of them. So this is going to be six plus twelve which is 18 valence electrons. Now, sulfur is going to be the atom in the middle, and oxygen is going to be the atoms attached to the central atom. So sulfur is the central atom. So we have two atoms attached to the center atom. There's only going to be one center atom, so if you have a total of three atoms, then N is two. If you have a total of four atoms, N is going to be three. So n is always one less than the total number of atoms. Well, sometimes you may have more than one central atom, so I just want to make that correction. But for the most part, typically, there's only one center atom. So in this example, n is going to be 2. So the number of lone pairs is going to be the valence electrons minus 8n divided by 2. So we have 18 valence electrons minus 8 times 2 divided by 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. And 18 minus 16 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So therefore, sulfur has only one lone pair. So I'm going to put one lone pair on sulfur. Now, we need to add at least eight electrons around the sulfur atom. Some atoms may have an expanded octet. They may have more than eight. But for the most part, if you can, try to make the center atom have eight electrons. Right now it has two. So this is going to be four, six. And in order to get eight, one of these has to be a double bond. So now sulfur has eight electrons. Now, the other atoms that are attached to the center atom Make sure you fill them up with lone pairs until they have eight electrons. They want to satisfy the octet rule. So oxygen has a double bond. That means it has four electrons already. So now it has six, and now it has eight. This oxygen has a single bond, so that represents two electrons. Now it's four, six, eight. So in this structure, we have a total of 18 electrons. Two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, which is what we needed. And in this structure, every atom has 8 electrons around it. 2, 4, 6, 8. So oxygen is satisfied. Sulfur has 2, 4, 6, 8. So sulfur is happy. And this oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. So ideally, when you draw a Lewis structure, you want to make sure that all of the electrons add up to the total number of valence electrons, and if possible, that every element has eight electrons around it. Hydrogen can only have two, so that's why this rule doesn't work with hydrogen. And sometimes the center atom may have an expanded octet, it may have more than eight, sometimes it may have less than eight, an incomplete octet. But the outer atoms, I've always seen they have eight electrons. I haven't seen a case where the atoms which are not the center atom where they don't have eight. Only the center atom can have more than eight or less than eight with, uh, under certain circumstances. Now let's look at another example. Nitrogen trifluoride. Let's draw the Lewis structure and let's calculate the number of lone pairs using that formula. So nitrogen has five valence electrons and fluorine has seven. Three times seven is 21 and five plus 21 is 26. Now, there's a total of four atoms, so one of which is the center atom. So there's three atoms attached to the center atom. And basically, you can look at this number. 
So therefore, the number of lone pairs is going to be the valence electrons minus 8n divided by 2. So we have 26 valence electrons minus 8 times 3 divided by 2. 8 times 3 is 24. And 26 minus 24 is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So therefore, the number of lone pairs in this molecule is 1. So using this information, it's going to be very easy for us to draw the Lewis structure. So I'm going to put a nitrogen atom, and I'm going to start with one lone pair. Now, each fluorine atom needs to have at least one bond. So already, we can see that nitrogen has eight electrons. Two, four, six, eight. So we don't have to add anything else to nitrogen. Now, every fluorine atom wants to have eight electrons. So whenever you have an outer atom, an atom that is not the center atom, if it has one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs. So it has eight electrons. If it has a double bond, like the oxygen that we saw in the last example, it's going to have two lone pairs. Now, if it has a triple bond, which will probably be unlikely, but it could happen, it's going to have one lone pair. So since each fluorine atom has a single bond, we need to add three lone pairs to each one of them. And so now we have a total of 26 electrons. Now let's try another example. Xenon tetrafluoride. So go ahead and count the total number of valence electrons, calculate the lone pairs, and then using that, draw the Lewis structure. Xenon has eight valence electrons, fluorine has seven, and uh, four times seven is 28. 28 plus eight is 36. So we got 36 valence electrons. Now xenon is the center atom, and there's four atoms attached to it. So n is four. So the number of lone pairs is going to be the valence electrons minus 8n, or 8 times 4, divided by 2. So that's 36 minus 32, which is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the number of lone pairs is 2 in this example. So what you want to do is first start with the center atom, and then draw the two lone pairs on it. And then we have 4 fluorine atoms attached to it, each of which will contain three lone pairs. So this is the Lewis structure of xenon tetrafluoride. As you can see, it has a square planar molecular geometry. And it helps a lot if you can calculate the lone pairs from the start. If you can do so, then it becomes a lot easier to draw the Lewis structure. So let me give you another example. Let's try the tribromide ion. So bromine has seven valence electrons, and there's three of them, plus we need to add an electron due to the negative charge. So it's 21 plus 1 is 22 electrons. Now there's three atoms, one of which has to be the center atom, so two atoms are not center atoms, so n is 2. So 99% of the time, it's going to be one less than the total number of atoms. So now let's calculate the number of lone pairs. So it's the valence electrons minus 8n, or 8 times 2, divided by 2. 8 times 2 is 16, and 22 minus 16 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the number of lone pairs is 3 in this example. So we're going to have 3 bromine atoms. And on the center atom, there's going to be 3 lone pairs, based on this number. And this bromine atom at the center has an expanded octet because we need at least one single bond to be attached to the other bromine atoms. So it has 10 electrons around it, which can happen. Any element in a third row or below, like phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, or in a fourth row like bromine, they can have expanded octets if the need is there. Now, the other bromine atoms have a single bond, so we've got to add three lone pairs to them so that they can have eight electrons. And so this is the Lewis structure of the tribromide ion. You want to enclose it with brackets whenever it has a charge.